<laughs> Watch that one eat it. Oh, that was cool. Oh yeah, not a bad one either. <laughs> If you guys don't have active imaging with Lawrence, you guys need to get it because that was sick. That was so much. I mean, that fish is in 40 foot of water, and I just like jigged it and watched like five of them come up, and this one just smoked it. <laughs> I didn't even feel him bite, I just kind of set the hook because I saw the it meet my bait. Oh, that was cool. I really ate it too. What's up guys welcome back so i'm coming to you guys with actually a barry s a fishing report i know it's been like i mean almost a year I, I mean i don't even remember the last barry s a fishing report i've done for you guys but i was out there i was out there from about the 5th of october to the 8th of october spent a lot of time graphing um looking around at things and uh i I think I got a pretty good understanding of what they're doing out there. So that's why I'm bringing you guys this report. I'm not, I'm not saying I know everything that's going on out there because only four days on that fishery or five days or whatever it is. Um, it's probably not enough to really dial in everything, but I'm just going to enlighten you guys on what I found. Right? So let's get into kind of the lake conditions, right? The lake is 38 feet low. Um, so for all you guys who have hummingbirds or whatever, adjust it properly um stay out in the creek channels if you don't have any kind of map chip try to stay in the middle <laughs> i don't know what to tell you uh because there's some islands and stuff like that that you could potentially run into especially out on the main lake near oak shores things like that you got to be careful not everything is marked so uh, I'm, i feel like they've had plenty of time to mark it but there's not everything's marked because i found a couple different island tops that are just barely out of the water or under the water that you can mess mess up your stuff on so be careful out there guys uh, but 38 foot low water clarity is super clear i mean the only places i saw that it was dirty was up north um and you know like up in puda or the north you know north shore is a lot dirtier only like i mean a foot of visibility in some areas um but majority of the lake I would say is probably around four to six foot of visibility um, is what I was noticing. Now, with the water temperature, this is where it kind of changed actually throughout the week or throughout the days I was there. Uh, the water temperature started in that 75 uh, on the south end, 76 degree temperature. Um, and then on the north end, it was like 70, like three degree temperature um, but we had a little bit of a cold front come in and that tanked the water temps i mean i was seeing for some reason or surface temps i should say um 70 degrees actually i saw 69 9 in, in one area um and then on the south end i was seeing like 73 uh, and and that's that's a pretty pretty good change you know so um this report i mean well i guess i could say the bite kind of changed a little bit with that cold front. Um, we had fish were really pushing bait and they're really pushing them up in the surface and they're really willing to chase and all that stuff before the cold front. Then we had that cold front hit and I'm watching these fish on active target and they're, they were still kind of chasing, but a lot of them were just not wanting to move at all. Um, so a lot of times that, you know, those slower applications were kind of what we're using to get, get them to, uh, to bite. Uh, let's see here. So I kind of went over lake conditions. The weather's been, I mean, like I said, the cold front, but mostly stable. I mean, you know, sunny days, not really a lot of wind. It's been pretty calm out there. Uh, but yeah, like, like I said, we had that cold front come through. So we had some clouds and things like that come through and now, it, you know, now it's bluebird skies again. So, uh, weather wise, you know, just that one, one cold front, but other than that, not really any crazy winds. Um, or anything like that. 
Now let's kind of get into baits and stuff, right? Uh, what was I catching them on out there? Uh, I'll talk about depth. I was catching them, which varied quite a bit. Um, what I was trying to imitate, things like that. Now, this first bait I'm gonna be talking about here, um, I was using it in kind of a variety of different applications, uh, not just uh, the application that that you may see in some of the videos, I guess. Um, so the first one actually, oh, got all tangled here. This is a Mega Bass, I think Dyna, is what it says on it, right? Yeah. Dyna Response. It's a Mega Bass bait. It's a blade bait. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I got him. <laughs> oh, I got him. <laughs> that was sick. Oh, this is, this isn't even fair. Not even fair. <laughs> These are different hooks. I switch out the hooks, um, but this is, I don't know. I feel like a little bit of an underestimated or underrated uh, bait out there for catching these fish when they're chasing bait. Uh, a lot of the bait schools I was seeing on the lake were anywhere between 30 foot and 50 foot. <laughs> um, that was kind of the deepest bait school I saw. But majority of them, I would say, were in 30 foot, and then they would even move shallower, um, especially in the evenings. Uh, because like I've talked about in previous videos, guys, this fall transition thing really kind of starts showing itself in the evenings. So if you guys really want to smack some fish and find some really productive areas, it's not a bad idea to maybe switch it up a little bit and not go out in the morning and just go out in the afternoon um, into the, to when the sun goes down. Now... This blade bait, um, like I was saying, I was doing a variety of different applications with it. I was um, not only dropping it vertically on fish that I saw on the graph that way and kind of just jigging it in front of them, um, but I was also casting it out and working it by fish uh, using an active target as well as just kind of blind casting it and yo-yoing it uh, back to the boat, almost like a lipless crankbait. And yeah, an LV500 would probably get bit in a lot of the same situations but it's quieter. This is just the vibration, not the rattles. Um, and in some, sometimes in that clear water and stuff like that, uh, especially if fish aren't really actively feeding, uh, or they're not super aggressive, sometimes this blade bait is just a little bit more subtle and, and still gives a vibration, but just not as loud, and they bite it better. And I noticed that I was getting some pretty good fish on it, up to three pounds or something like that, three pound largies, and some two pound spots and smallmouth. It's definitely a fun little bait. Uh, the stock hooks on it last for about a day and then you gotta switch them out. Uh, I think I got ST36s on here and some owner hyper wire split rings. I upsized the back one uh, just slightly. The front one's still the same size as the stock hooks but I upsized the back one and that's just to potentially get a better hookup ratio. Um, that may bite me in the, in the butt at some point in the future just playing around with it i'm not a, I'm like i consider myself i guess a professional fisherman because i do it for a living but i'm not a pro by any means i'm still learning here so i mess with things um and just try to try them out you know and see how i like it so that's what i did there with that that back hook uh let's see here so that's a blade bait now the next bait I'm going to be talking about kind of what I'm doing here as well to get these fish really kind of feeding. And I talk about this on my guide trips too, but this next bait's an A-Rig. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. How? What are you biting? There we go. Finally got one of these little buggers. I'm trying to get them to get hooked on the A-rig last like five bites I've gotten. Now we just slowly bring it in because we want to see if we can get another one. That's okay though. Oh darn. Kind of look at this little butterball. Football life. All right, I've been catching them good on A-rig more towards the lower light conditions, not so much in the middle of the day, but they've been wanting this, uh, the non-bladed A-rig. This is a G-Funk uh, non-bladed one. Uh, they've been eating it better, I guess in the not so low light conditions. They want the bladed one, I guess, or they'll still bite the bladed one uh, in the low light conditions, but they'll bite this one in the low light conditions as well. I got Kytex on here, I got Easy Shiners and uh, the Fat Swing Impacts, and I think it's Electric Shad is the color. Uh, so that's that's that, but what I'm what I'm doing with this is, you know, we got all these, these bass chasing bait around in let's say 30 foot, and I'm trying to get them out of the boat, right? Because that's the fastest and the easiest way to catch these fish um, and get them fired up and, and really keep them under the boat and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get them there. But they're roaming. They're chasing the real thing. And so that's a, diff that's a difficult task, I should say. So a lot of times what I do with this A-Rig is I'm band casting around, you know, trying to just happen to put it right in front of a few or a school bait fish where the bass are chasing it and just happen to get one to commit on it, right? Hook them. And as soon as I hook them, I'm just slow grinding them to the boat. And when I'm doing that, I'm not trying to I'm trying trying to get them in very fast. Not my not my goal here. I don't care if it's an eight pounder. I'm just gonna take my time with it, and I'm gonna grind that fish to the boat. Obviously, trying to keep it down. Um, one, what that does is it makes sure that your fish doesn't um, come up too fast and get the bends basically right uh, from deep water. Two. It allows other fish to get that a rig because you still got two other hooks on there if you're in california you still got two other two other hooks to get bit um and i had a double up once already uh this week on the a rig and a triple up actually too but i lost them <laughs> i lost i had a triple up and then i lost two and i only had the one it's frustrating but as long as you're grinding it slow most of the time when they're schooling like this, they'll take a shot. More fish will come take a shot on that, that bait. Um, so then you put you up your chances of getting more fish on that one cast, right? Now, the third thing it does is you're bringing that fish in slow. You're getting it by the boat. you got another buddy with you or a client jigging a spoon or jigging a blade bait just right by the boat. Just, I mean, 20 foot down, 30 foot down, whatever. You just start getting that spoon going. And what it does, you're dragging that fish in, all his friends are following. Next thing you know, they see that spoon, they're losing their mind because they want to know what the heck that fish ate anyways. They're hungry. And now they got a spoon falling right in front of their face. It looks like a dying bait fish. They think things are happening. So everything gets fired up. You get your fish in, you know, put it, throw it in the live oil, whatever you're doing with it, throw it back. Um, you pick up your spoon and your buddy should already be hooked up. <laughs> so he's hooked up with a fish, you drop down, you hook up with a fish, and next thing you know you got them under the boat and they're schooling. That's how it's done, guys. It's like clockwork. I don't consider it a secret. I'm putting it out there for you guys in this video because it's not easy to do, but when you can do it, it's it's recommended, right? Um, so that's what I, I try to do, and that's what I try to do on my guide trips, and that's also how you maximize the areas that you're fishing. You get those fish to come to you. You don't just chase them around. Um, you can do that and you can pick off some good ones here and there, but it's just a lot harder um, to do. Now I talked about the spoon, right? This is a spoon we were catching them on. Amy Blue, uh, the Blade Runner Dust Spoon. <laughs> Quality spoon, uh, ounce and three quarter, 
it's really all you need. It's a perfect profile for those bigger shad that those bigger fish on Berryessa like to eat. Um, Amy Blue's a good color, Morning Dawn's a good color, just the pearl white, uh, electric chicken, small mountain spots, love that electric chicken for some reason. Um, but I like these spoons because they're good out of the package, uh, hardware wise. Their split rings are good, their treble hooks are good. The only thing I add is that barrel swivel, swivel on the top uh, that allows you to not get as many line twists from that thing just spinning down there as it falls. Uh, I fish it on 20 pound straight fluorocarbon, uh, not for the fish, but for, or not to minimize break offs or any of that stuff. It's just to keep the spoon from getting caught up on itself. That larger line diameter allows that spoon to not get caught up on itself as much. Um, and the fish don't seem to care, especially when they're that fired up. So that is the spoon we were throwing, um, as well as Morning Dawn, but Amy Blue has seemed to be a better one. I mean, you can see the teeth marks on it, guys. I'm not messing with you guys. These, The fish were chewing it. So that's that bait. The last one, you guys are gonna love this, especially you people who have been watching my videos for a while. The Dark Sleeper, it's back. They bite it. I might, if I got a clip of it, I can't remember if I do, because my GoPro's, uh, we're having problems and I actually just got a new GoPro. I got a couple new GoPros because um, I'm trying to take this YouTube thing seriously for you guys. Um, and I'm tired of having camera issues. So I picked up a few of those and I shouldn't be having any more issues. But if I have video of a dark sleeper bite, throw it in there. But I'm sure I'll get some more here in the future, especially as fall really presents itself and I'm more on berry more. But this little color, it's like a shad color, translucent dark sleeper. Uh, this is a three quarter ounce size. And it's just the little three, uh, three inch size, not the big one. Money, money, especially when those fish were on bottom and uh, you know, they, they didn't necessarily want to come up for things. Dark sleeper seemed to get bit. Another bait that I don't have out right now that was getting bit, uh, especially actually yesterday uh, when we were out there was uh, a jig. Yeah, there's a little, little green pumpkin red jig and uh, actually my buddy Josh, uh, he caught two really nice spots, almost like three, I think they were like three pound spots on just a little jig, especially on the, after this front moved through and, and the, you know, those bluebird skies out there and these fish were kind of lethargic. They didn't want to chase as much. Um, the jig got smoked and I'm sure this dark sleeper would have got bit more too, but I kept forcing them, trying to get them on an A-rig and trying to get them to do other things. Cause I was watching the active target and just being dumb, but you know, we caught some fish and it wasn't anything crazy, but uh, it was still fun, beautiful day on the water. Now that basically sums it up guys. Uh, like I said, I was catching most of my fish in that uh what 30 40 foot range now that doesn't mean 40 foot on the bottom sometimes they were suspended over 70. it's just what happens these fish like to suspend especially the bigger ones guys so don't be afraid to go out over 70 foot of water and graph it's what you, you, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do and these fish will sit out there and they will suspend at the depth in which the bait fish are at and they will hang out there on any piece of cover they can find whether it's a vertical chain, whether, it, whether it's a bridge piling, whether it's anything along those lines, they will hang out on that stuff and use it to relate. Or they'll just be out in the middle of nowhere not relating on anything. I've seen it a lot of times. I'm not sure what, how they do that, but they just do it, especially spots and smallies. Uh, they also, in the evenings, talk about the fall transition stuff, we're pushing up to the surface, chasing a lot of bait fish on the surface. So top water is not out of the question, guys. Like, Water temps are still high. You can get them on top water. Was I throwing top water much? Not really, because wherever they blew up, I would see them blow up on or blowing shad out of the water or whatever. I would just fire that A-rig in there and pick them up that way. <laughs> so um, they, they were biting it really aggressively uh, when they were eating that top water. And actually some of the bigger fish were actually eating top water or blowing up the shad on top. So they were tend to be more towards the surface. Um, but that was towards the evenings and the mornings, I think. So, all right, guys, I think that basically sums it up. If you guys got any questions, drop it in the comments. I feel like I'm pretty good at, you know, answering those. Um, you know, if not, whatever, let me know. But uh, I try to, I try to answer you guys' questions in the comments and uh, get you guys information that you need. As long as it's like a respectful question or a question that is not like prying on like where I'm fishing and all that stuff, because that that kind of gets annoying. Because um, 
it doesn't ma matter about where you're fishing guys it's about finding fish because they're not this isn't the, the places i'm catching fish are not the only places on the lake that their fish are biting like <laughs> there's a hundred places <laughs> that you can find and that's why i'm always looking for new places so it's one of those things guys just like just go find your own bite you know it's more fun that way anyways too uh i don't i'm not mad if somebody goes and sees my backgrounds and goes and fishes it um but understand that that area has already been fished and there's a reason i'm putting it on youtube you know what i mean like it's just, it, it's probably not in your best interest you know um so if you guys are looking to book a trip God, i got crazy people driving by my road all the time if you guys are looking to book a trip um my website linked down below um in the video description as well as i'll probably throw it in the end here um so you guys can see that all you do is fill in the form at the bottom of my web page and uh, i contact you within 24 hours with available dates uh I, sorry i don't have a calendar up on my website my schedule is just doesn't work like that so um i try to send people dates and we figure out a date after a little bit of talking this is the way it works um trophy trips yes forgot about that i will be booking trophy trips this winter guys where we don't throw spoons we don't throw dark sleepers we don't throw any of that we just throw swim baits we just go out um we probably don't even make that many casts <laughs> we we look at things a lot we go and hunt it's not a it's not a trip where you're you're fishing and making 100 casts a day guys you are hunting and a lot of times, I mean, I got spots that obviously I, I, we graph it, side image it, whatever, right? And we look to see if they're there. And then we, we roll up, turn around, we, you know, we start, we make a cast. It's one cast. It's one shot, guys. You don't, you don't get any more than one shot. So you better be able to cast. That's, that's how it works. Um, obviously, I'm there to coach you. So I'm trying to teach you guys what I do and exactly how to line up your cast and exactly what, how, what angle you need to make. Uh, because that's how you get that big fish. I haven't been able to do it much lately because I'm busy guiding. Um, but I understand the fundamentals of it. I understand how to trophy hunt. It's not, it's, it's actually fundamentally different from traditional fishing. Um, I think traditional fishing can sometimes help you find trophy areas, uh, per se, but like when you know, there's a big one there, you don't just roll up and start firing everything you can at it and make a hundred casts. You got to make sure that angle is right. Um, so that's how, that's what I teach on my trophy trips. And I give you guys kind of the tools you need to take that back with you. Um, and hopefully maybe catch a big one on our trophy trip, but more than likely be able to hunt properly and catch that big one on your own time, um, on your own boat or from the bank. Even you can do it. Um, I just try to give you guys the principles. So, all right, guys. That is it. I've been talking too long, so I will uh, catch you guys on the next one. See ya!